Oh, hey man. What you doing? I'm brainstorming topics for my website. Oh, cool. Can I help? Okay, I'll bite. What do you know about cameras? Oh, cameras, cool, cool, cool. So, cameras, right? So the, these cameras, they have these, these, these tiny little square things you put inside of them, and um, you know they, you use them to, to capture things. They're called the, the mm, 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 yeah, they're called the, mm, sensors, right? They're called sensors, right? Okay, and, and these sensors, you, you use them to, to sense things by pressing the uh, shutter. Yes, the the shutter. Yes, that. And wait, 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 wait. I got this, and I can prove it to you with this. If your website's about cameras, well, you gotta take. Don't you dare. That's not a camera. A no. selfie no. No. like this! He's not in the selfie. Where, where is. Dude! If you have a website that you're trying to get ranked on search engines, that is not how you want to brainstorm your content. Sure, you could brainstorm the traditional way by grabbing a notebook or your iPad and starting with your main topic, say in this case, watches. And from there, you could, you know, branch off into smaller ones like, say, Seiko, Rolex, and uh, keep branching off from these topics until you have your entire sitemap and content strategy. And if you're a subject matter expert, you could get pretty far with this method. Now, the catch is you would be brainstorming from past knowledge. What if some of those watch brands are already bankrupt and no one's searching for them. This is why we need data that's relevant today. And that's why we're reviewing Context Minds, an SEO tool that helps us brainstorm, research, and create content all on one platform with the help of AI and keyword data. Just a disclaimer that Context Minds is sponsoring this video, but everything I say here is 100% my honest thoughts. Let's get right into the review. Hello and welcome to Context Minds. Let's click new map right here. Let's click photography. So. I obviously like photography. So let's say I like cameras. I'm just gonna add stuff to the description and tags because that might help it. So cameras, models, lenses, uh, that'll do. Let's click create, see what happens there. And ooh, very nice view right here. This big white canvas is where we build our mind map. Right here at the bottom, you have the related concepts and suggestions. And to the right, we have our notes and research. So you get to do all of these things in one place, which is which is crazy. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag photography to the middle. And wow, look at that search volume. Yeah, it's right there. You got the keyword data. Oh, and you, you can zoom in and out using your um, mouse scroll wheel. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, uh, oh, see, the moment I click it, you got like, do you need a fancy camera? The three fundamental camera, uh, nude, nude photography, who invented photography, all sorts of things related to photography pop out. And you got the, you got the keyword metrics here to the right, which is, which is absolutely incredible and helpful for ranking on search engines. And you get your suggestions over here. Um, these are likely um, existing articles and you can actually pin them. See, they actually cite the sources. So you can pin these as notes if you want to study them. Um, if you're in some kind of niche or industry, chances are there is a way of doing things in your industry and there's a lot you can learn from those who have succeeded before you. So yeah, that's what you can do here. And as you keep scrolling, you can also note, oh, it says drag to map. How does that work? Huh, you can actually drag the source to the map. So, huh, uh, it's, uh, I, I like how the app isn't linear. So it, depending on how your brain likes to organize things, you can operate that way. There is no like one fixed way to control everything. Right, so here, if you scroll to the bottom, you also get this generated text by AI, which is, oh, it just disappeared. Let me scroll to the bottom again. AI image, huh, interesting. Oh, there we go, generated text by AI. I'm gonna drag that to the map. 
And what does it say here? Photography is the art of capturing light and keeping it for a long time. Um, there is no source cited, so I'll presume that this is kind of like a, a compound of different sources. Um, personally, I would make sure that this is plagiarism free first. So um, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, run it through some proofreader tools just to be sure that it's okay. Or, you know, um, because this is just a mind map, this doesn't have to be your final content. You can just use it as a springboard for your next ideas. All right, so let's say I'm gonna start creating topics under photography. So assuming this is a site map, I'm going to add structure. Um, I'm gonna add a text box for the about section. You could have, uh, you know, your your privacy policy. <laughs> uh, who, who does that nowadays? I mean, for your main pages, you could add um, a contact page. So if there's something you notice here, you have the option to add text only with no suggestions. So um, if I click add concept to the bottom right, and I clicked, uh, if I type say blog, the moment I type blog, it shows things related to blog. And, but that's not relevant. So we're not gonna do that. We can actually decide to click add text box instead. So it is plain text with no suggestions. So it's just serving as a label. So I'm gonna add it here. So see, you can actually put blog under about if you'd like to do that. That's kind of weird structure though. Um, you could add like say a services section. Um, when you add concepts, by the way, see you have all sorts of results here. You have scopes. So these are like general topics. You could add um, personal stuff. You could add related topics. Um, of course, what is checked here, that is what is left in. So these are trending questions. So let's say I just want to have trending questions. Now, when you're um, building a website based on SEO, and this works for YouTube as well, um, it helps to ask specific questions. And um, there you go. Those are all very nice questions. All of a sudden you have lots of topics you can add for your blog. When was photography invented? Click on this. Um, keep adding some more. So from there, you can actually start adding concepts from the bottom right there. I'm just going to drag them and drag them and drag them and see what I like. Oh, that's, that's quite a few right there for your blog. Very nice. Keep adding them, keep adding them. That's, that's a lot of stuff. Now, as you can see, without even having to think so much, we have all of these questions that people are actually asking and, and you can organize them by keyword volume or search volume rather and keep adding these. Now, as for the colors, why is this yellow? Um, I'm not exactly sure at the moment. I do believe that um, the colors can change depending on what you do. So I'm just going to call this a lit tag, you know, um, it just add the new color at the moment, but I believe the Context Minds team is trying to um, create meaning or add meaning to these colors. Of course, very useful here, as with um, most mind maps, you should be able to add notes. So you click these three dots over here, you can click add note and say priority one. And you can do that for you know all of your notes here and you're gonna have a properly organized to-do list. Now, I don't want to bore you by building everything right here, so let's transition to the next phase. Okay, so let's say we spend a bit more time building this uh, site structure. I actually uh, ended up doing, uh, adding more to the guide section rather than the blog. Um, you know, we could always just keep adding more concepts here. But now, as you can see, we have quite a number of pillar topics. We even have an about section with, um, you know, a mission vision. And here, helping people become full-time photographers. And when you have that, it actually actually helps context minds feed you with other ideas for guides. So when I added this mission over here, I got these other ideas like seven photographers share tips on how to become a professional photographer. And you have more guides over here. This actually isn't a straight line, but there is topical hierarchy. Now going back to the blog, let's say I'm writing about cameras and the moment I click camera, it immediately mentions that the search volume is is this much, which is quite a lot. 
and you can start mentioning like say the camera different camera brands for this example and who it was very sharp it showed me about camera lenses so we're gonna add that as a pillar topic and after a bit more time we have these we have arrows what do these do well like i said there is no one fixed way of organizing things in context mind so if you don't prefer this outline like format you can start using these relationships these links so let's say i want to connect canon to sony i'm gonna say canon um link to other select sony and i'm gonna say a uh, competitor obviously and uh, right there you have a link between them Ooh, i actually put sony inside panasonic so let's say um you know what if panasonic is actually the mother company of sony which obviously isn't the case but that's just an example of what you can do with this here i'm beginning to create an ecosystem so i have like say under camera we have camera lenses and i mentioned them as complementary products that is to say when someone buys a camera or buys a camera lens they'll probably want to buy the other thing and of course when you buy camera lenses you would also want to get camera lens filters as well and the beauty here is you see the search volume under each of these topics so let's say i know the camera brands and i know the lenses but filters are awfully specific and i know nothing about them thankfully over here um without having to open a new tab on google context minds immediately feeds me with more knowledge about filters. Oh, this looks like an interesting filter. The keyword volume is high, it's pretty high, 260. So I might make a, a blog article specifically just for this one filter. Um, it might be worthwhile. And I'm not even familiar with the types of filters, but here apparently there is such a thing as a solar eclipse camera lens filter. That's interesting. And apparently there's a UV filter. And I do know there is such a thing as a, a neutral density filter. I'm getting nerdy here, but as you can see, I'm not having context minds do everything, but it is supplementing my existing knowledge. Now let's go to the guides section again. And here you can see that once I created how to become a photographer, context minds also provides the headings under each of those guides, which is bonkers because I can just keep adding this stuff here. And uh, I'm not sure they're necessarily related, but my goodness, just by doing this, we're really creating a data supported bedrock for our website. So we have our article title here for the guides. We have the headings. And once you reach the heading, you do get access to AI generated content on the right as well. So I scroll down here, look at this. It says how to become a photographer. And this is based in Australia, I think. And we go to point number six, put the right set of cameras and lenses and photography equipment. And once I click this heading, it talks about having the right lens, having the right camera. And this is something that I can actually add to that piece of content. So I am springboarding the content for each of these sections. Look at this, it's talking about setting your photography pricing and it says, if I'm going to be honest, I don't know. This is one of the reasons I'm not a photographer. And yeah, it mentions other details about pricing with a very personal tone. So now the green ones are the content, the purple ones are the headings. And again, I wouldn't 100% rely on the AI. I could just use this as a kickoff point to think of my own content and relay it with my own brand voice. Now, when you're done with all of that, you can actually share the map in many different Different ways so you got this copy link thing right here which means you can share it as a read only mind map you can export it as a png pdf really love that and there is a teams feature so you can if you have your team member log in they can actually edit it from their end if you go to settings you have other things here like map actions so you have download as text you can totally do that and make it an outline instead you can create a copy of the map and this is exactly what i did to create these different stages for my transitions you can render the maps without relationships again as pngs you can print them pdf svg pretty interesting you can even export the connections so they really thought of everything here in terms of the relationships of the data and you have the general settings here of what you want to include and in the concepts. You have concepts and topics created by you. You have related topics, concepts um, shared by the community, etc. You have auto linking, which creates relationships immediately. And if you prefer straight lines over curved lines, you can simply select that. Personally, I prefer these straight lines. 
And those are the core features of Context Mines. Now for pricing, Context Mines is very, very reasonable. And you know, with a free plan, you get five private maps already. And you know, you would have limited features, but but that's a great place to start for a, for a free account. And with a pro account for 19 bucks a month, you get everything you need, unlimited private maps, 6,000 topic and keyword suggestions per month. So you know, if you were to ask me, like, I don't think you're gonna even expend all 6,000 while you're uh, building your mind map. 1,500 web and AI article suggestions per month. If you are needing more than these, then you're probably spending way too much time planning. Now for what you pay for, you are creating your site structure and the content for your website and you are going to get so much traffic and um, search volume from that. And once in a while, they do have a pro lifetime license. I'm not sure for how long this will be available. Right now it isn't, so that's something to look out for. But $69 for a lifetime of relevant keyword data. I used to spend $99 a month on another service called Ahrefs and I quickly unsubscribed. So for the value it has to offer for any of these plans, I don't think you can't go wrong with Context Mines. Now in terms of user interface, I thought it was fairly intuitive and I like the design. The green theme is very fresh and relaxing to the eyes. I love the flexibility of having different ways to arrange your elements. If you prefer arrows, use relationships. If you're more of an outline person, use topical hierarchy. If you like colors, use tags. And of course, you can use them in conjunction with each other. The related concepts are helpful maybe 80% of the time, which is more than enough for me. There are still some kinks that I'd love for them to iron out. Like you can't rename the map from the dashboard view. You actually have to go into the map, wait for the page to load and rename it from there. But I'm sure they can solve that pretty soon. Also, I have no problems whatsoever in terms of loading time. So that is incredibly refreshing. The speed and performance can keep up with my rate of brainstorming. Now for social proof, I love taking a look at Trustpilot first and foremost. Um, that's a great score of 4.5. That shows a lot of trust. You only have two four star reviews out of 19. Normally you'd see like a lot of ones, a lot of threes. And you know, after reviewing these myself personally, they don't seem like they're incentivized reviews at all. In my experience working with Merrick, the co-founder as well, he's really seamless to communicate with. Now in terms of tech review websites, I like to look at Captera and G2. They apparently don't have a Captera account as of now, but they do have a G2. And over here, the score is 4.7 out of 5, which is um, incredible considering the competition you have over here. This is very impressive, very trustworthy. It seems that they could use ease, ease of use. So I, I would more or less agree with, with, with these scores myself personally. And uh, Merrick himself is just very outspoken about the product itself and the service, which is actually not as common as that's supposed to be. A lot of founders, you know, um, they hide the fact that they're founders or they're not that proud of their products. But Merrick here is very clearly passionate about what he does, knowledge visualization enthusiast, and he's been working on Context Minds for some time now and looks like he's really dedicating his life to making this work. So that's always a great sign. Overall, I think Context Minds is an incredible tool for solopreneurs, agencies, and freelancers alike. I would have loved it if they had keyword data for a Philippine context, but I guess there's not enough demand in my country to warrant that. I've also asked Merrick if they'd consider adding YouTube keyword data in the future because my goodness, that would turn context mines from a tool that I use once in a while to a tool that I use practically every day. It's really refreshing to use an SEO tool that doesn't dictate every last detail of your site structure. The current YouTube SEO tools are very linear, but nowadays creators are becoming multi-passionates and they don't want to be trapped in the confines of rigid SEO. Context Minds is really onto something here, and I think that by adding that YouTube search data, they would give us creators the benefit of enjoying creative freedom while still having the advantage of SEO. SEO used to be robotic, but in the age of AI, people will crave for content that is not generated by AI. And with the help of tools like Context Minds, where the human is the driver and the AI is just a helpful GPS system, we can create content that's more human. Make sure to check out Context Minds at contextminds.com. And if you like this video, check out this one.